guys, it's KC, also known as KC Dia on Twitch, and I have been keeping the biggest secret from you guys. I have been keeping this secret from you guys for quite some time, and I finally get to spill to you guys what it is. I'm so bad with secrets, so I, I, I was like literally itching to tell you guys. I, I literally could not say anything about it until now. I got invited by, wait, I got invited by EA to playtest Apex Legends Season 20.1 in person in LA at Respawn Headquarters. Like, I am still wrapping my head around the fact that that happened. It was such a surreal experience to be able to meet Apex Legends' most beloved streamers and the most talented developers. So thank you so much to EA for the invitation and the hospitality. You guys took such great care of all of us there while we were up in LA. This is Apex Legends, I believe, second ever in-person Creator Summit type of event. I believe the first one was back in season three. So to be able to partake in the season 20 creator summit and seeing all of the growth and changes that have been implemented season after season to see what the game has become now has just been so insane to see. I'm so glad I was able to partake in this event and I'm super excited to share this experience with all of you. That being said, there is so much to talk about. So let's get into the mid-season changes that are coming to Apex Legends season 20.1. We're gonna go over the legend perk changes, the new universal heirloom, the new LTM, the new map rotation, map rotations actually, and more. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to see the new changes that are going to be happening very, very soon. So. That being said, let's get into it. So right off the bat, right when we got over to Respawn headquarters, they took us to their LAN room where we were able to play test the new limited time mode, Lockdown. Kind of drawing inspiration what it seems like from Control. It is the first four squad free for all battle for dominance. Essentially, it is kind of like Control and TDM colliding, I guess. So you essentially earn points by capturing zones, holding them uncontested again, same kind of ideal as control and eliminating other players as well. Their squads will spawn with, you know, the standard TDM loadouts and seek out capture zones that periodically spawn throughout the small, crazy filled maps. We have Thunderdome, Skulltown, Zeus Station, and Monument on the rotation. Uh, first squad to 500 points wins. I was able to experience this LTM myself and got to experience the, the absolute chaos that is locked down. It was definitely interesting uh, trying to find uh, which legends provided the most potential towards winning for your squad, but it was it was absolutely insane. While playing the new LTM lockdown, it became very quickly apparent that Caustic is very, very OP in this mode to the point where even Timmy had just bit the bullet and decided to play Caustic. We ended up winning this game uh, because of how OP he is, so take with that information what you will. Uh, super cool to see the chaos kind of ensue with four teams instead of two like how it is in control. Our control matches in my opinion can run a little bit longer than I would like them to and lockdown is just like a a condensed and faster version. I enjoy the fast pace LTMs, so lockdown is no exception. So yeah, super excited for you guys to try it. Next, let's talk about the new universal heirloom coming to the game called the Cobalt Qatar. It is a universal heirloom, just as the Buster Sword was previously with the last Apex Collection event. Because it is a universal heirloom, it can be equipped to any legend of your choice. It can be acquired through Shadow Society event packs that are part of the limited time event. In my opinion, it looks super clean. I love the animations for it. I think it's beautifully done. Um, the animations are absolutely beautiful. I'm super excited to see another implementation of another universal heirloom. I just feel like you kind of get more bang for your buck in a sense where you are able to equip it to any legend of your choice. Of course, with the mid-season patch, there is going to be the introduction of a new event, the Shadow Society event. The items within this collection event are actually so beautiful. I was able to uh, equip some of those skins onto the legends I was playing throughout the test play, and I was very impressed with the amount of detail and the amount of love put into these skins is very apparent, and I'm super excited to equip them onto my legends on my account. But there are new legendary skins for Mad Maggie, Lifeline, Revenant and more. Each Shadow Society item received during the event will also count towards milestone rewards, which are bonus rewards that you'll collect as you progress through your collection, and you'll automatically earn milestone rewards after unlocking 5, 10, 20, and all 36 items. All 36 items, including the new heirloom, the Cobalt Qatar, can be acquired via Shadow Society event packs with no duplicates of the event items. So complete your collection event before the event ends, and you'll automatically receive the Cobalt Qatar's matching Deathbox cosmetic. 
like, yes, there's going to be the introduction of another death box. Kind of goes hand in hand with the heirloom. Now the map rotation conversation. So typically we have map rotations being the same for both pubs and for ring. Essentially the map rotation is taking a little bit of a different direction this season or mid season, I should say. The pub rotation is going to be a storm point, Olympus, then broken moon. Then for ranked, you have storm point, Olympus and world's edge. Uh, the mixtape maps are also going to change up mid season as well. For control, you have barometer, production yard and thunderdome. For Gun Run, you have Monument, Skull Town, and Thunderdome. And then for TDM, you have Monument, Thunderdome, and Zeus Station. All right, now let's get into the legend balances, all the buffs and nerfs to your guys' favorite legends, uh, or least favorite legends. First and foremost, let's talk about Bangalore. I have heard so many mixed feelings about the Bangalore nerfs going on. So we have her Rolling Thunder. The cooldown was increased to 4.5 minutes. It was previously at 4. Her Smoke Launcher cooldown was increased to 35 seconds as opposed to 33. The Smoke no longer did deals damage. Smoke duration was decreased to 11 seconds. It was 18 previously. And smoke particles now dissipate faster. Her upgrades though include a Big Bang being removed and the new tactical cooldown reduces the tactical cooldown by 5 seconds. Her upgrades for level 3 are the cover me auto ping no longer tracks the player who triggered her double time and her refuge heal rate increased to 3.5 HP and it was previously 3. Side note, devs were trying to wean away from the smoke meta that, you know, a lot of the player base was complaining about and that it encouraged more plays with the smoke uh, as opposed to playing in the smoke. Again, kind of weaning away from the smoke meta. Next, we'll go into Bloodhound's buffs. Their upgrades are Odin's Glare is moved to uh, level 2 and their tactical cooldown is moved to level three. Caustic, uh, another, you know, <laughs> another smoke meta kind of character. Uh, his gas damage is now increased by one each tick. Previously, it was five, five. Da it would deal five damage, then five damage, then six, then six. Down players will still only receive five damage a tick. The gas slow effect now only applies on the first damage tick for two seconds. Some buffs for Caustic include the Particle Diffuser is now moved to level three and the Residual Toxins move down to level two. My personal favorite, we have Conduit. Her changes include her Radiant Transfer. Her cooldown has increased to 31 seconds as opposed to 26 as it was before. And her Regen Interruption Delay Time was increased to two seconds and it was only one previously. The Fuse upgrades are his Reckless Explosive Damage is now increased by 50%. It was previously 25. Another favorite of mine personally lifeline will get into her upgrades as well um, so her level two upgrades include her tactical cooldown being removed uh so you can just constantly have doc uh, on hand all the time uh new tactical cooldown is reduced by 25 seconds making the cooldown time equal to its deployment duration so you always have doc again like what i said you'll just always have them on hand her level three upgrades include the gift wrapped removed the new gold plated next package spawns with golden gear uh, the Evo Cash, Gold Knockdown, Gold Backpack, etc. Uh, also contains one Shield Bat, one Med Kit, and either a Phoenix or a Moby. But Octane changes. His only upgrade was his Explosive Damage is now reduced by 50%. It was 25 previously. Pathfinder's upgrade is his Zipline Zen. Damage reduction increased to 50%, which previously was 25%. Another crowd favorite, I feel like, as of recent times, is Revenant. His changes include the Forge in the Shadows. Knocked no longer refreshes the tactical during his ultimate. His tactical cooldown is no longer shorter during his ultimate and his ultimate cooldown is increased by 60 seconds some upgrades though uh now that we're veering away from his nerfs his agile assassin is removed his tactical cooldown is moved to level three and his new ultimate cooldown reduces ultimate cooldown by 30 seconds in level two wraith uh some wraith changes include her upgrades being her tactical cooldown moved to level three and her ultimate cooldown moved to level two all right i know i already kind of touched on the new ltm called lockdown and there is a return of a crowd favorite mode being implemented in mid-season as well. Three Strikes. Yes, Three Strikes is coming back. Super excited about that myself. It's my favorite LTM of all time that Apex has ever released. But here are some changes being implemented with Three Strikes as it makes its comeback. This time around, so you have the revive time reduced to two seconds. Players revive with 100% health, but zero shield. New minimum guaranteed loot system ensures that you spawn with a competitive version of your loadout and inventory. I hope you guys are just as excited about the new mid-season 
season changes happening in Apex Legends to come. That being said, thank you again so much to EA for, again, the invitation to such a successful event. Uh, it was a pleasure being part of the 20.1 Creator Summit this year and to be able to meet everybody in person. It was such a great experience to be able to meet such amazing, talented people. But don't forget, if you guys enjoyed today's video, to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!